Okay, so today we got Visual Studio 2022. We got .NET 7 Preview, or well, .NET 7 RC2, and the Visual Studio 2022 Preview. Um, so we're gonna check it out. Um, I'm actually gonna start with the regular Visual Studio. Visual Studio 2022, although it says RC, it's actually not RC. So let's create a new project. So I'll go through and look at some of the things that were working before. It's been updated. Um, obviously, I've been able to create console applications. So let's see if we can create, continue to create a console app. That's the baseline here. I put it in my sandbox. Put it in the sandbox. Go to scratch pad. Let's go. So here's a basic console app. Next, next. Um, so far, um, on the regular main, uh, uh, main branch of Visual Studio, you still can't do .NET seven preview. So you're stuck at .NET six for now. I'm sure that will change. I hate the. Um, I hate the stupid no top level statements thing. So I'm gonna uh, make sure that don't use that. Let's click create. All right, so that's working. Um, so build that, make sure it works. Everything works. So I so that project type is working just fine. All right, now let's check some of these other project types. So we'll try a Blazor WebAssembly. That's another cool type that I like to use a lot of. Don't want HTTPS, um, don't care about any of these things. I don't want to use top level statements. Let's see, can I build this? I see, um, oh, yes, I can. So Blazor still seems to be working, right? And again, why am I doing this? Well, I'm just trying to give you guys a preview of what's going on in this preview so you know whether to update or not and whether to mess up your, you know, <laughs> a good thing going. Cause you know, we all know that some of these, some sometimes you update these things and it's like, <laughs> What the heck is going on? So here we go. I don't know why this is doing on another screen. There we go. It's all working. So Blazor WebAssembly works just fine. Let's go back there. Yep, working just fine. No problem. That's good. So stop that. And now let's see if we can do a Blazor server app. Does that work up in here? So Blazor server. No authentication, no HTTPS, don't use top level statements. Here's my Blazor server app. Build that. Also seems to work. But new instance. And that's over here. So I feel like the client and the server have a little bit of a different gradient. I don't know if I'm tripping here, but it feels like that. Definitely over here, you notice that each time I do the fetch data, it seems to be giving different numbers. So that's a little bit different. Let me do that client again. This is the WebAssembly side of it. No, it's the same. But the one distinction here is that this returns the same data. That might be because it's just pulling it from a file, sample data, yeah. So it's just pulling a JSON file and reading it each time. Whereas over here, what is Mr. Weather doing? Here's the data. This guy is calling a service, which is returning some random data. So that's the difference. Kill. Cool. So I'm going to move all the things that work into their own solution folder work. Okay. 
Okay, so that works, that works. All right, let's see what else we got here. And of course the console app works. Let's go here. And uh, let's try .NET MAUI. Okay, so here's a new multi-app UI framework. I'm not sure what it's called, whatever. Um, so .NET MAUI, again, you're gonna use .NET 6. Gonna run that. And we have, once again, the weird thing there. Did the NuGet packets not working? Don't. Okay. All right. So, well, I don't know why that's there, but it doesn't look like anything is working here. Let's try to rebuild. Maybe that'll fix it. Nope. Crazy errors. So again, this is from literally from the gate, from the gate. I've done nothing. All I've done is open Visual Studio, uh, Visual Studio installation, and just try to create a .NET MAUI application, and that's failing. Let me try cleaning. See what you might have to do to get this to work. Building again. Nope, still doesn't work. Let's see if there's some packages need to be updated, right? Does something need to happen here? Nope. Nothing needs to be updated. Everything seems to be working, seems to be correct. It's just failing. Okay. So if you are doing some .NET MAUI stuff, because I definitely know that this was previously working, my advice to you, do not update <laughs> the Visual Studio 20 uh, to the latest version, right? So let's try another project, okay? So what about an Azure function, right? So function app, start with the HTTP trigger. Yeah, I don't care about all that. Make it anonymous. All right, so we got our Azure function here. Whoa, look at that. That's a lot of red. That's a lot to red. <laughs> Okay, it all fixed itself, unlike the Maui app, which is still all messed up. I'm gonna build. Works. Let us start this in a new debugger. Pull this over here. What we should see is that the function, that the function runtime says if I found the function. Uh, There we go, function one. Yep. It's not work, so you would be able to access. Oh, there's a get. So let's see if we can actually use this get. Get means that we can actually open it in a browser. So let's see if it'll work. Bring a browser over here. Wow, that's huge. Um zoom in. I don't actually look like that. There we go. This HTTP trigger function executes successfully. Last name, blah, blah, into it. Uh, hello, Joe. There we go. So this Azure function is working. You can see it's doing all the things it's supposed to do. So that works. That goes into the works column. All right. What's next? I'm just going through the basic things here, guys. So I'm not gonna do everything. What about a WPF application, right? So you've been writing all sorts of WPF stuff. Let's say you have a native library you're using. So this is uh, obviously w WPF on .NET Core, not the regular um, .NET framework WPF. Uh, again, I saw Seems like the Nougat packages all started properly. Looks like the designer is working, which is awesome, right? Can I do drag and drop here? Oh, take a button. Um, <laughs> what just happened? Let's take a button. Okay. What? What if I don't want to do all this stuff? ETN, ETN, 
one, I guess. Created the weirdest margins ever. We'll just make the margin 50. And it sets width at zero. What? And height at zero. What? And here's the old button that I had. There we go. Right, so I think this this is working. Let's run this. See if it works. And here's my WPF application. Yep, works just fine. WPF run on .NET Core. That's, I gotta say, that's super cool. So this works. Now let's see what's next. Um, well, I guess class library, I'm sure would work. So I'm not really gonna look at the Azure functions, Maui. So, ah, let's do a UWP. Did we do a UWP yet? No, we did not do a UWP. All right, so, um, yep, we're gonna use 22H2 minimum version, ah, 22H2, man. We're not going back, bro. I'm not going back. And let's build it. <laughs> we're doing it just like Microsoft, no backwards compatibility. <laughs> That net Maui, right? Moving forward. Okay. Start new instance. And here is my UWP application. Black screen seems to be working. I should probably put a button there or something, but this is not really a, a drag and drop, you know. Wow, I don't know what, what I just did there. I basically did nothing, <laughs> but I just crashed. Try opening it again. Oh, uh, there we go. It's working. Make you a little bigger. Oh, is there something wrong with my mouse? Let me try with the, I was using a, a mouse that's attached to it, and now I'm using a mouse that, no, there's nothing wrong with my mouse. There's some weird thing happening with, uh, with a designer where it seems to like, I don't know, be. Yeah, you get to a certain size and I guess it does this red line. I'm sure there's some reason for it. I don't really care. But let's, let's run this again. I honestly don't think designers use this drag and drop interface anyways. I think that they do things. Live it, live it differently. Okay, that all works. UWP works. It's funny because WPF, which is a super old technology, works on .NET Core six. UWP, which is a super new technology. I mean, <laughs> like you know, how old is this thing? I mean, it came out basically with Windows ten, right? It came out with Windows ten because Windows eight was using. Um, something, it wasn't called UW, I can't remember, or modern apps or Metro. Yeah, they call them Metro. It's essentially the same technology, but they call it Metro. Um, and it's a continuation of it. And so this modern thing, which actually I think is built on top of .NET Core, if I'm not mistaken, there's a mistaken, there's a little bit of .NET Core in there. This modern thing, right, if I open it, it does not run on, it runs on this. That's the target runtime. It's some custom version of, of, um, of .NET Core, right? So, and we can see what I'm talking about here. So let's, let's, let's try to do something here. Let's play around with this before we move on to the next one. Well, first of all, I can't edit. It's, it doesn't use the new, all right? This is the most, so over here is WPF application edit project file. This is the most modern technology um, Blazor is a little bit more modern. Uh, Blazor is more modern than this, but it's a pretty modern desktop technology. And obviously it's still using the old thing where for me to mess around with the files, for me to mess around with the project files, I have to unload it, right? And then it all shows up, man, look at all those property groups. And uh, let's create an item group here. How am I making the same mistake multiple times? 
multiple times, item groups, and then let's copy these guys in here as well, right? So SQLite and any framework, fill that. Oh, let's reload it. Boom, reloaded. Let's build this. Ah, what's going on? Well, what's going on is that um, this .NET Core stuff is not compatible with uh, UWP. Well, is it compatible with WPF, a technology from before 2010, before 2005 even, I think? Well, it's a good start that it uses the other format, you know, Build this. Yes, it is successful. It is compatible with it. So I'm going to open up NuGet right now. I'm going to remove these guys because they don't work. SQLite does work. SQLite does work. But but um, this guy does not. This guy, I think, is the one that's not working. Yeah, so let's get rid of that. Then I think it should work. Let's build that. Yep. It's alive. All right, so... We've gone through these. So what else is there? Let's see. So those are, I think those are the main ones. Um, so I um so UWPs also work. And scroll down. Do wind forms work? Oh no, wait, do Xamarin forms work? Ooh. Right? You've been writing all your stuff in Xamarin. And uh, Microsoft is telling you that you should be using the multi-app UI technology, right? Multi-app UI technology. So I might as well leave. So you might as well just forget this technology right here, even though, I mean, don't forget it. But what I mean is that if you're going to do this, you're essentially stuck on iOS and Android. Um, you can't do it on Windows because we just show that Windows would not use, well, you can't do it on Windows, but you'll be limited, right? Because you're essentially not using .NET Core and all the cool new goodies are in .NET Core. Then the .NET 6, .NET 7, that, that, that tool chain, right? So if you're over there, you know, sorry. Sorry, not sorry, I guess is what Microsoft says to you. Sorry, not sorry. Well, gotta start downloading all kinds of stuff. Why is this still messing up? Oh, this is my .NET Maui stuff. Wow, this is really messed up. Could not find Android.jar. This means the Android platform is not installed. So this might be why it's not working. Okay, so we'll try to fix that in another video because <laughs> this is running long. Um. So right now, I think it's downloading some stuff. I don't know if I'll be able to test to see if this works. Let me build this. Does this work? I'm going to have to go in and basically don't deploy, don't build, right? Close that, try again. Oh, that's a shared project. It won't work. I mean, I honestly don't know why this keeps on showing. So let me just do that so we don't see it. All right. All right, required to build. I'll click this message, follow the prompts. All right, so we're going to have to install some stuff for this. So you're going to have to install something. I think it works, but I can't be too sure um, because, again, I'm not able to actually 
It's installing some stuff, so we're waiting. Let me open up the output window so I can see if the iOS version is installing this. That's me drumming. We're 40 we're 40 percent from complete there, right? So after updating this, um I'm just gonna have I been using Android here? I'm not sure. So I can't tell if I if my environment was already set up for Android, but um obviously as you can see, um there's um you know. There's some additional work that you have to do. If you're doing Android development after you set this up, you're going to be getting these kinds of errors here that don't seem to, you know, make a lot of sense. Well, maybe don't make sense to you. Will iOS now build? iOS build successfully. Will Android now build? You get packet restore failed. See error window. I don't see any errors. Oh, zero four errors. I can't tell this means it's, oh, it's still doing its thing. Man, Android is rough. Okay, it built. It built, it built, it built. We got two guys built. So we can safely say that Xamarin forms, at least the Android and iOS version, will work. So I'm going to move these guys. First of all, I'm going to put them in their own folder. I'll call that sucker Xamarin. And then I'm gonna take all three of these and I'm gonna move that them into Xamarin. I'm gonna take Xamarin and I'm gonna move it into work. I'm gonna change that to say, can I rename that? Rename worked. All right. So it's this is getting more suspicious. It's looking good because what it really does mean is that this um, .NET Maui stuff, that there's probably something I need to configure. And if you know, Future person who's watching this, please let me know. Um, let's see, what else are the are the mainstream ones that people still use right now? Um, blank, what is this? This is the what is this like the Win UI three desktop app? <laughs> I'm not gonna mess around with that because I don't think anybody does that. Um, Razor Class Library Teams app, Python application, resource group. Blank. WinForms. Let's do a WinForms app. Let's hope that this is the, yes, it is. It's the .NET 6 WinForms app. We're just going to build and run this guy. I'm not going to do anything. Actually, I am going to do one thing. I'm going to try to drag and drop. Waiting for IntelliSense to finish. <clears throat> um, the task manager. So here's my task manager. Um, oh, man, this is brutal. Here's what I'm working with. I've got 32 gigs. I've got the Surface Studio, 32 gig of memory. You know, we're using 31% of the CPU. Here's my disk. I got one terabyte. Um, I've got the the fully loaded uh, Surface uh, Studio, okay? And here's what's going on with Visual Studio now after creating all those things. I have another Visual Studio instance up. Um, let me close that down. It's just a console application, right? So as you can see, this guy is going on, what, 3.6 gig? So it's running a little bit hot. I don't know if this is working or not, but I'm gonna do a build.
And I want to close this down because, wow, it's a web forms application. Have web forms always been this slow to build, or is it, or is this like, I mean, this is a blank application. What is going on? There's nothing here. And the pride, this is like, um, reported to be like the something that allows you to build things quickly. So man, this is slow. This is like the slowest thing. Well, if you use wind forms, <laughs> uh, let's look at the output window to see what's going on here. Are, are people still using wind forms? Are the people who are using wind forms, are they are you experiencing slowness? Is this a I can't tell if this is a uh, it's I don't think this is a recent update thing. This might just be a Visual Studio 2022 thing. I mean it's all 64 bit. I don't know. It's it used to be real compact. It's like nowadays memory is no joke, man. Or and it might be the recorder. You know, I'm using I'm using some software to record this. I don't want to give them a plug unless they give me money. Um, so, wow, this is rough. Right, I'm going to pause this and just resume it when this is done building because this is like crazy. So I know I said I was going to pause this until it was done recording, but uh, I'm, I'm sorry, to, until it was done building. But as you can see, um, it's going on a couple of minutes here. It's not been too long, but it does not look like, it looks like this thing is hung. Um, so I'm just going to stop it. Close it down. Well, I can't even close this down. Okay, so it looks like Visual Studio is just like dead here. Dead on arrival. Nothing working. Nothing closing. Everything stuck. So my favorite way of stopping Visual Studio and task. Ah, that stopped you. And now this still doesn't stop. What is going on here? Oh, this is a mess. All right, so we got everything finally stopped. Let's open it up again. I think we started here. I mean, one of the things that I've always, I don't know if someone knows how to do this, but you know, it's like Visual Studio, where Visual Studio opens, you know, it's like a gamble. You have no idea. Like that. when you're in a multi-screen scenario, it's like sometimes opening here, sometimes it's opening there, it's opening based on what the last time, the last place you closed, the last instance of Visual Studio. It's there's doesn't seem to be any way that I know of to you know to force it to open somewhere. Here we got some crazy exception. The design surface failed. So I'll try to build again, see if that works. Yep. Works. So there was something going on there, something kooky. Um, it happens um, you know, once in a while. No biggie. All right, so those are, you know, the main uh, the main projects that, I'm gonna, that we're looking at here, I don't think there's anything, you know, everything else is kind of weird. It's just the basic um, ones. I'm not gonna look at the .NET framework things because quite frankly, I don't care, I don't use that anymore. Uh, so if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Um, if you wanna see more, if you have any questions, if you have a version of Visual Studio or some software you want me to take a look at and review, from a development perspective, right, or what have you, uh, let me know and I will do that. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Oh, have a blessed day.